Greetings Earthlings, it's been a minute. Today, I have revived my channel to talk about an album. And you know an album is good when I have to revive my dead channel to talk about it. The album we are going to be talking about today is one of, in my opinion, the best rock albums of probably the past decade. And this album is Technology by Don Brock. Wait, Don Broco. Now Don Broco is an experimental English rock band from Bedford, England, and this album is absolutely amazing. In this video, I'm going to be going over every single reason as to why I think this album is so damn good. So I'm just gonna essentially go down the track list and uh, give my thoughts on each song and my thoughts as a whole on this album and why I think it is so good. Because for starters, this band is not just a rock band and this album is not just a rock album because they have a great way of incorporating electronics into their sound and one band that this kind of reminds me of a good bit is bring me the horizon however don broco is very much their own band and they have their own sound one big thing i can say for this band is that the vocal chemistry between vocalists rob and matt matt is also the drummer of this band but the chemistry between these vocalists are absolutely amazing you'll notice that a lot of the times rob takes care of a lot of the singing that's done like the mid register like a lot of the the screamy vocals or a lot of vocals in the lower register too while matt sometimes cares like a lot of those higher melodies but even on this album here rob doing some falsetto vocals and both of them just sound really great when their voices combine uh, they complement each other really well. I think a great example of this is the song Tightrope. Their vocals just have this chemistry to them and every time their vocals combine, it's, it's amazing. Another example that kind of comes to mind for this is the post-chorus and t-shirt song. An amazing moment where the vocals like just combine. It's like, safe to say, I want you. I, I'm not even gonna try to sing it, but like it, it's really, it, it, it's good, it's good. It's just a really pleasing sound on the ears when both of these vocalists, like they, they just combine it. It creates this beautiful sound. But as I said, I'm gonna go the track list and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go crazy. Uh, because in my opinion each song on this album is worth talking about and unique one complaint you may have about this album is that some of the songs can tend to blend together a chorus may feel like you know it, it kind of got used again you know but to be honest I think each of these tracks have enough individuality where I can't really say that personally sure a lot of the guitar tones do remain really consistent there's some elements on this album that do remain really consistent but in my opinion that just further enhances why this feels like a, a full album experience rather than you know something that's not that so let's just get into this and also shout out to my friend Katie uh, she's the one who showed me this album and kind of got me into this band there are three main songs I listened to kind of to get myself into this album like way before I even took a listen to the album as a whole but I listened to come out to LA everybody and pretty and these are the three songs that kind of caught my ear and and essentially made me want to listen to this album as a whole and give it a chance so I have the album pulled up right now and the album starts off with the title track technology now keep in mind I have not really looked into a lot of the lyrics uh, of the songs on this album however I can try and interpret them for myself and if any of you Don Broco fans can in the comments below let me know any of the meanings of some of the songs or kind of what you guys have as your own kind of meanings for them I uh, think that'd be really cool so if you want to feel free to drop those below but essentially the first song that kicks off this album is technology which I interpret lyrically about being about this person who's kind of like addicted to their phone or their piece of technology and essentially all this person's friends are kind of getting actual like kind of real life hobbies getting into relationships and mentions like getting into working out like all these real life activities and i kind of sense this frustration from this like main character who's kind of like addicted to their phone and really attached to this technology kind of like kind of being like why is everyone around me like getting you know into actual real life shit like technology is like you know such this great thing but that's just why i interpret it to be i could be wrong i think i'm i'm kind of right on it um but that's just why i interpret it to be um but this song is an absolute banger that kicks off the album it has an amazing end up where it kind of switches up the guitars a little bit this song contains vocals from both rob and matt and i think matt kills it when he does the verse i think the chemistry as i said before is really tight on this track and just the energy 
is there. One thing I can say for this album is that the net, the energy never dies down or it gets old. Sometimes you can have this really loud energetic sound, but it, it can easily get old because it can feel like a formula that gets repeated. But not with this album, they managed to keep each song unique, but still in that kind of that same energy, which I, I think this album absolutely kills it at. Um, but technology is an amazing start to the album and uh, it's one of my favorites on the track list. Now second we have Stay Ignorant which is another absolutely fucking ripper of a song. Like I, I can't even like begin to explain how good it, like the chorus of this song is like probably one of the best on the entire album. This song incorporates these kind of like acoustic guitars at some points with the and like it, it's it's just it's it's absolutely beautiful the way it transitions from these acoustic moments on the song to like that that chorus that just kicks in full force it's such a banger and like I, I feel like seeing this song live would would be absolutely something else and this is one of the moments where Rob kind of like does his falsetto and I think it works really well on this track and I think just the entire song is just a a fucking a fucking ripper like he, the chorus just kind of comes out out of nowhere like it, it kind of like the song kind of captures you when it starts off with the whole you kidding yourself live like and, and like you know it, it gets you know gets you into the group but like when that chorus hits it, it's like a it's like a fucking semi truck like this this track is insane another another great standout in the track list in my opinion i think this album just starts off insanely strong now the third song we have here is t-shirt song which is actually a song that took time to grow on me and i think what really let it grow on me was the fact that the post chorus was so good because when i first heard the song i'm not gonna lie i was not huge on it however i love the post chorus so much that i kept coming back to it i think i kept coming back to it just for that moment to the point where now i can say i like the entire song because this song the reason i love this song so much is because it gets to a point where it kind of incorporates these orchestral horns and the horns also like come back at the end and it, again the, the post chorus is just absolutely fire like matt's vocals are absolutely insane on this and like the the ending like the the way they incorporate the orchestrals and some of the electronics that come in at the very end of this track are absolutely amazing in my opinion and this is another song where i, I think and this is one of those songs where it may even be better live than it is in the studio version because like i mean the studio version is great and all but i feel like this is one of those songs where it's like being played live it probably has a whole different feel to it and i would probably enjoy it a lot more if i heard it live but again the horns and the song are amazing i think matt kills it vocally i would even go as far as to say i would love to hear the post chorus be even more explosive it has this amazing introduction when these horns come in and everything and it's like at the end i just want to feel it go go full throttle into something huge but needless to say this is one of the tracks that grow on me and one i can say i fully enjoy front to back now with an absolutely killer post chorus i i love this song after t-shirt song we have come out to la which is one of the songs i said earlier kind of got me introduced to this album and this band as a whole this song takes the pop formula and completely flips it on its head because it starts off with this insanely basic like little little pop hook and it's like okay like i'm not gonna lie when i first heard the song and i first heard that bit i, I was like eh like I, I i don't know i don't know where this is gonna go but then it, it absolutely slams into that classic don broco sound and it slams into the the chorus where rob takes over and the the loud guitars and then during the chorus this really emotional kind of like reverb guitars in the background I'm not sure what you guys are talking about. If, like, if you hear this song, you may know what I'm talking about. But it, again, it's very reminiscent of Bring Me the Horizon to me. Um, but it, it's absolutely beautiful combined, you know, with the refrain of come out to LA, come out to LA. And by the end, it, it feels like kind of this emotional statement that kind of feels like a staple in how far the band has made it from where they started. That's just why I kind of get from it. It kind of feels like a, a celebration, this track. And that's why I love so much. And the, and the music video for this song is... Uh, pretty uh pretty crazy as well this band has some very uh, uh a very unique approach on on music videos and uh it's something that i can respect they're oh, i gotta sneeze <laughs> damn that was satisfying anyway anyway this band has a really unique approach on music videos in my opinion i find them to be very cinematic and kind of like i i don't know how to describe it, but i've never seen music videos like the the ones this band puts out so for that i mean they they have my respect even more for that but come out to la like it says one of the songs got me introduced to the band i i love this song once again i think the distribution between matt and rob's vocals 
on this track are absolutely insane. I love how it flips the whole pop thing just like completely sideways on its head and the way it kind of turns that, that pop refrain, you know, into the way it brings it into this loud like guitar driven sound is just, it, it's beautiful. And this song is a absolute standout on the track list and maybe like one of the most iconic Don Broca songs ever. I think this song is a staple in their discography at this point, but amazing song. Then after Come Out To LA, we have Pretty, which is another song that, again, kind of got me introduced to this band. Now, this is one of those songs that definitely incorporates a lot more electronics, I'd say, than the other tracks. It has that good balance between electronics and that rock sound that Don Broker are kind of known for. And the electronics in the song absolutely sound amazing. I don't think when they incorporate electronics into this song, it sounds, you know, out of place or, or awkward. Like, it, it just feels like it should be there and it, it fits into this super chaotic energy with these distorted, like, kind of vocal sample, like, trippy shit going on. And then the way it incorporates, like, these electronics at, at some parts. It, it's a song that you'd expect to be an absolute disjointed mess, but somehow it isn't. Or maybe it is and you just kind of grow to be okay with it because it's just their sound. Because one thing I can say about this band is that there's this very kind of fun, lighthearted energy to some of these tracks. You know, I'll get to it later, but even like the, the very ending moment of that's on the song Potty Mouth, but it's kind of like disconnected from it. It's just like a, a light little jam session with the band. They're just like messing around stuff, but like it, it's cute and like it adds a, it adds like a sense of personality to this band. Like that's why I kind of love, like this band is not afraid to have fun, like not just with their sound, but like just in general, like as people, they seem like pretty cool, which definitely adds to, you know, a, a likability of a band like this. So I, I really uh, respect them for this. And I think Pretty is an amazing track that I think lyrically is just, I kind of get this like vibe, like, you know, kind of like about the, the power looks can have, you know, I, when I listen to this song, get this perspective of this guy at a bar, he sees an attractive woman and like, you know, he obviously knows that like, hey, you know, there's there's more to it than her her looks and all that, but he can't help but feel like kind of this, this sense of intrigue when it comes to this girl, like to the point where he doesn't mind like her kind of having this sense of, you know, control or authority over him. And again, I'm not even sure if that's correct, but that's just like kind of what I, what I kind of get from it. But I think Pretty is an amazing song that incorporates electronics, distorted vocal samples. It's got the whole package. It's a fucking chaotic song, but uh, an amazing song at that. Pretty is amazing. After Pretty, we have The Blues, which is one of my favorites to talk about because this is probably one of my favorites on the entire album. The Blues is such a good song. It starts off with this kind of like thudding bass. You really don't know where it's gonna go. And it starts off with, you know, Rob in his, you know, falsetto mode. And it's like, okay, and then the chorus kicks in and the chorus is probably one of the best on this entire album. The chorus of the song is just an absolute ripper and I love the bridge section on this song. I think it's amazing. I love the way it transitions back into the final chorus, how it kind of solos out the vocals before nailing into the, the chorus one last time. And I, I think the sound of this song is amazing because it once again like kind of incorporates those electronic elements kind of with that like thudding hard like electronic bass and then you know the way it incorporates the guitars you know I, I think it's absolutely amazing I think the layered vocals between Matt and Rob here once again sound amazing because for some reason every time their vocals combine it, it just creates like heaven I, I don't know why but the blues is an amazing track and that, that's all I got to really say about it is it's amazing oh boy the simp song gotta be you okay so gotta be you is uh, one of the moments on this album where it kind of slows down a little bit and the reason I call it a simp song I'm, I'm come on it's a simp song this song kind of goes about this topic of you know you love this person so much to the point where they could step on you and break both your legs and, and you'd still love them which is you know kind of kind of cute it, it's a very it's a very simpy song but it, it's a cute it's a cute simp song in my opinion i think the reverb kind of guitar chords in this are really sweet uh it's probably one of my least favorites on the album but that isn't to say that it doesn't have parts about it that i do like i again like i said i love the reverb guitar chords i love just the the glossy instrumental the instrumental of the song just sounds really pretty um, I think Rob's <laughs> vocal delivery on this song is kind of interesting because you can't really understand what he's saying, but it's given in this very passionate, almost like like kind of out of breath tone. I, I can't really put it into words, but you know, it, it, it's a cute song. Even though it's one of my least favorites, it's a it's a cute little sim song that I can uh, that I can I can appreciate. I can respect this song. Apologize for the random change of scenery. 
But anyway, the next track, I believe. Okay, so after Gotta Be You, we have Good Listener, which is a track that at times I can absolutely despise and a track that at times I can absolutely love and jam to. The first thing that comes to mind with this song is that I love it when that guitar comes in and kind of replicates the vocal melody at the end. I, I think it's a sick little guitar solo moment. Uh, and it sounds absolutely amazing. I think the energy of this track is absolutely like, like, like elevated, like, like off the roof. And I think the song kind of intentionally tries to portray this kind of like annoying, like energy that kind of drills into your ear, which I, I think it does a great job at because at times I, I absolutely, I, I, I seriously, I mean, I, I cannot stand this song sometimes, but at times I can absolutely love it. And what I can say as of right now, at this moment of recording is that I absolutely love this song. I think it's amazing. I think the way it kind of kicks off with that weird kind of vocal sample that kind of sounds Panic at the Disco-esque at the beginning. I think that sounds great. I think the bass throughout the verses is it's very groovy. Um, and I think the song is just a, a high energy, you know, just, it's a song you don't really have to think about much to enjoy. You can kind of just go with it. Um, you know, it's kind of in the middle for me. It's nothing crazy at most. I can enjoy it. It's not one of my favorites on the album, but it's definitely not one of my least favorites either. So good listener, it's a, it's a, it's a solid song. So that, that's all I gotta say about it. Like I said, I love the guitar throughout the bass line and the verses is great. Um, and I think the song just has really captivating energy about it. However, there are times where I absolutely can't stand the song. So, but as of now, I, uh, I'm enjoying it. So I'm, I'm gonna leave that that. After Good Listener, we have Yen. Oh shit, Yen. I love talking about this song. Mainly because Yen, in my opinion, and let this drill into your head, Yen is the most underrated song on this album by far. I don't know why this song does not have more attention because this song is absolutely amazing. The message I kind of get from it is kind of letting your financial status kind of like be what kind of determines your worth as a person. You can kind of feel this ego drive in the song from like, hey, you know, make it rain. I'm making bank right now. Therefore, everything is good. And yeah, just, just make it rain essentially seems to lyrically be the, the concept of it. But the post-chorus melody of this song is, is probably one well, of my favorite parts about it, it's very simple. It's something that drills into your head, uh, but the co the post-chorus melody, it, it's kind of like inaudible. You can't really tell what they're saying. Uh, I looked in the lyrics, it, it says like, I'm a knee eat, I'm a knee eat, but I don't, I really don't know if that's even true, but I, either way, it's really catchy. You know, and at first when I listened to this song, it's kind of like with T-shirt song where the post-chorus caught me into the point where I ended up liking the entire song. I could say the same for again. I love the post chorus so much where I just kept coming back to it, coming back to it where just the song as a whole is something I can vibe out to and it has another guitar switch up at the end, kind of like the way technology does and it, it's absolutely, it's amazing. Like the, the vocals that also get layered with that little switch up at the end I think are absolutely killer and just Yen as a whole is one of my favorite tracks on the entire track list easily. It also incorporates these kind of glitchy vocal chops in it. It's a mess of a track at some points, but it's something I really don't mind at all. I think this is an amazing song. So I just realized I accidentally skipped over like a good bit of these songs here and I don't know, I think it just like <laughs> skipped past my mind. Um, I'm gonna get my phone on low power mode here because I'm like, I'm dying. But anyways, backtracking to the blues. After the blues, we have Tightrope, which is a very beautiful moment on this album because you can really sense this anxiety uh, coming from this song. I think Tightrope is easily the most emotional song uh, on this record. I think they do an amazing job at, like I said, encapsulating this anxiety. You know, you can kind of compare it to, you know, how it's, it's like kind of walking on a tightrope in this anxiety like I, I i keep saying anxiety but it's like that's without a doubt the energy from this track is just this really anxious tense energy and you also feel this sadness coming from it it's without a doubt the most emotional kind of like sad song on the album but in that it's absolutely beautiful the way you know the refrain don't look down the way that refrain kind of comes back in the final chorus at the end is absolutely beautiful this is one of my favorite matt vocal moments on this album um, and I think Rob does a great job too. This is without a doubt could be one of my top three on this entire album because this song is just absolutely, it's a beautiful track. It's a sad kind of anxious track, but it's one that it's, it hits you in the feels and uh, it, it's absolutely beautiful. After Tie Rope, we have Everybody, which as I said, is one of the songs that kind of got me introduced to this record. Uh, this song is just a, a really kind of 
mindless, energetic track. Funny enough, I think kind of now it's in one of my least favorites on the album. I don't know if I put in like the very bottom, but it's a song that kind of shrunk on me as I heard more songs from this album because I realized the potential kind of Don Broco had. Um, this song became less of a standout. That being said, I still do love many parts of the song. I think the guitar and the chorus is absolutely amazing. I love the verses on the song. I think Rob does a great job of carrying the energy vocally on this track. Um, and I love the <laughs> It's absolutely badass as hell. Uh, I love it and I love the the vocal layering the in the, in the way it goes up in the background. It, it's just it, It's absolutely beautiful. I think this song has its highlights for sure It's a song I can still sit back and enjoy so I'll give it that after everybody we have greatness Which is another one of my favorites on this album the guitar is something that reminds me so heavily of walk this way by Aerosmith to the point where I, I can't get it out of my head. Um, but that being said, this song has a, a super 80s kind of vibe to it. Like just the whole energy out, it's just the drums, the guitars, like the, the vocal style and the verses is it, just, it feels so, it, it, it takes you back a little bit, at least for me. And I think uh, this band definitely takes influence from that kind of era in rock. Um, but I think the song is an absolutely amazing, strong, hard hitting chorus, give me greatness or give me nothing at all he's saying here and like you just you just feel the impact of it kind of this this desperation of just wanting everything where it's just like i it feels like if i have the ability to you know reach greatness and you know all the it's just like you know give that to me or, or just show me nothing because like i want to see that so desperately and like you can just feel that coming from the track and i think the track has a explosive chorus and explosive post chorus um the one part i kind of a bit eh on is uh the bridge i think when they kind of slow it down with the piano thing uh and tracks like technology it works great here it kind of feels a bit cheese i think matt sounds great as always but uh i think it this moment just kind of sounds a bit cheese i think the bridge here doesn't really uh pan out as much um but it's a song i uh i still enjoy nevertheless i i absolutely Love and adore the song. Greatness is an uh, amazing track. And after Greatness, we have Porky's, which is a song I love to talk about, mainly because I think this is the most experimental song on this entire album. The verses kind of start off with this uh, foreman shifted auto-tune vocal, which kind of gets uh, known as the refrain that comes back at the end, um, which is very subtle. I, I, I like that, but it's something that threw me off when I first listened to this song. There are some elements of this song that I remember just feeling a bit disjointed on first listen, I didn't really know what to think of it. Um, but then this song has moments on it vocally that are just holy shit, where Rob is just fucking screaming. And like, it, it's it's beautiful. It's like, it, it's so clean and it, it's just, oof. And like, there's this anger radiating from this track too that I think they do a great job at encapsulating this frustration with this person, this, this anger. You're just sick of this person like using you or like, just you, you come to expect them to like lie and just like, it, it almost feels like for me, like whenever I listen to the song, it almost feels like a, a conversation, you know, with your own mind and kind of like intrusive thoughts, kind of like, you know, I know you're gonna lie to me anyway. So it's like, why should I listen to you? You know, I, I think this song does a great job at portraying this anger. I think it has some moments that are low key comedic, uh, vocally, like I, I'm a traitorous hippie. Uh, <laughs> but that being said, I, I, I love this song for being as bold and experimental as it is. It's something I, I really admire from this track and it's a track I can I can definitely listen to when I'm, you know, in the, in the girl feeling that, you know, feeling that, feeling that heat. And uh, yeah, I think this song does a, a great job at capturing that energy. Okay, now going back to where we should be on the track list, uh, we have Something to Drink, which is a song quite obviously about kind of drinking to fit in or to kind of like distract the noise going on around you. You're in this crowded place and it's just this anxiety that you're overwhelmed by. You need a drink to just get away from it. And uh, the song is very interesting to me because I absolutely love the sample that's in the very beginning. I don't even know if I should call it a sample because it sounds like it was made by the band. You could kind of hear Rob's vocals and it's the oh. It has these like little slight percussive elements too. I, I can't really do a great job kind of replicating it, but it, it sounds absolutely amazing. I love this sample. I love the elephant like stomping drums that come in as it kind of like leads into this chorus, like where you can just feel kind of what the vocalist is feeling in this moment. Like there's too many people, you know, with that, that stomping beat, it feels like this kind of overwhelming anxiety that this song, you know, kind of nails at trying to, to capture. And I think the way it leads into the chorus is very nice. I think the chorus may be like one of my kind of least favorite, uh, 
choruses on this album, though it's still something that I think works. I think the post chorus kind of that comes in later on is a bit bit strange. I don't, I don't know if it really fits, but it's something I can still sit back and enjoy. So, you know, I'm I'm not complaining too much. Um, but yeah, this is probably one of my least favorite songs on the album. However, it has elements that I absolutely love, like the sample and the drums, I think are, are absolutely killer on this song. And uh, I think it does a good job of lyrically kind of like getting that message across of this, you know, kind of anxiety, you know, trying to, you know, escape, you know, trying to escape this anxiety, like through drinking, you know, you get this image of like at a bar and like, it, it does a great job at capturing it. So, you know, I, I can't fault it for that. It's a, it's a solid song by the band. Now, after something to drink, we have Blend the Water. Now I will say as this album gets towards the end, it, it loses my interest uh, a good bit compared to when it had my attention at the beginning and even middle of the album. I think the end of this album is where it starts to fall off a little bit. Um, but that being said, it still has moments I enjoy. Blend the Water is a song that is, like I said, probably one of my least favorites. Um, but sometimes I can I can kind of get into the groove of it a little bit. I think the I think the bridge of the song is interesting. I don't know why. I I think the chorus just doesn't hit as hard for me. It's not like there's anything specific about it that that doesn't really hit. I, I can't really point a finger on it. I mean, he says, give me all your energy, but my energy at this point with this song is like, is like, it's like here. But yeah, essentially blend the water is a little mid for me. Um, but you know, the bridge I think is interesting enough. I just don't know why the chorus does not really hit for me. Um, but it's, it's a decent song. There's nothing really downright bad about it. It's just kind of like, here for me, um, but there are nights where I can kind of get into it a little bit, so there's that. Now the last song here is uh, Potty Mouth. Uh, Potty Mouth as a song, uh, I don't think they're really intended for anyone to take this song too, too seriously, because for me it's just kind of like, uh, it's probably even like lower than Blow in the Water, <laughs> um, but you know, it, it, it's Potty Mouth I kind of interpret as being like, you know, having to censor yourself for the radio. At least that's what I'm getting from it. You kind of sense their frustration towards that in the song, if that is what it's about. That's what I'm assuming it's about, at least. Um, but I think the most memorable part of the song, in my opinion, is probably the, the very end where you kind of have that, that jokey kind of a uh, little live session uh, with the band. It's just a, it's a cute moment, in my opinion, to, to end the album. And that's probably the highlight of, of Potty Mouth for me. And that's not even really part of the actual song, Potty Mouth. Like, because Potty Mouth itself is probably my least favorite song on the album. It's just that it, it's just kind of flat, but you know what that that ending bit is pretty cute So for that, you know, it, it, it kicks it up a little bit for me, you know um, But that is the last song on the album. So that concludes uh, me talking about Technology by Don Broco overall. I absolutely love this album This album is like nearly all I've been listening to for like the past like few months now it feels like and that's because it's just so good as an album experience as a front to back experience even at the end where things get a bit slow you kind of still want to sit through and kind of take in the album as like a, a whole experience and uh, I think this is one of the best rock albums to come out in recent times or semi-recent times this album was uh, made in 2018 I believe um, but yeah it's an amazing experimental rock album that incorporates electronics very well. I love the vocal chemistry from the two vocalists in this band. I think it's absolutely killer. I think they know how to do a really good chorus at that and insanely good post chorus. I think a lot of the bridges on this album hit and I think the entire sound of this album feels just super natural to the band. It feels like something that they just kind of know by heart and they're good at just kind of exploring that to the full extent, really embracing it and just showing what they can do as a band. And I think the album cover uh, of this album, I think also fits pretty well with the sound in a, in a weird way, I can't really describe it. But anyways, that was uh, Technology by Don Broco. Uh, again, you know an album is good when I come back from the dead to review it. Um, so if there are any other albums I end up absolutely loving as much as I do this one, uh, then I'll probably cover it on this channel. Um, and yeah, that's about it. If you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe. I may not upload for another year, but you know, you can keep that notification bell on so you can, you know, get that, get that rush of, uh, adrenaline whenever I do upload. Um, but yeah, that is about it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Maybe a couple years, but we'll we'll get there. Peace out. Have a great day. Whatever you're doing, go out, get some, get a soda, 